What's up guys and welcome back. In this video I'm going to review the Line 6 G50 Relay, which I've been using for the past year and a half and has never given me any problems, except maybe for one thing I'll mention later in the video, but nothing serious which might compromise the excellent opinion I have about this piece of gear. I chose this particular one for bass because first of all it covers all frequencies from 10 to 20,000 Hz, which is more than you'll ever need on bass, and because I have a pedal board so I wanted something compact like this. Let's start by talking about the receiver. It has an all-metal casing, so no plastic, except for the antennas and the sides, which have a rubbery texture. And this goes at the end of your pedal board, and if you chose the G50, I'm assuming you have one, since it is about the size of a pedal and requires the usual 9 volt negative tip, positive ring polarity, just like the other 90% of all pedals. You do get a power supply in the box, but you can also use one that has the same specs, just make sure you can cover the 300 milliamp requirement. Other than that, there isn't much else to say about it. The two antennas should be at 45 degree angle to cover as much area as possible and can easily be removed for transport or safekeeping. On the other side, there are two output jacks, a main out to connect the rest of your pedal board and a tuner or auxiliary output if you wish to connect the tuner or split your signal. The channel knob allows you to select the transmission channel from 1 to 12, so you have a wide margin if other band members are using gear from the same brand. And if possible, I'll always choose channel 1 or 12, because there's less chance of accidentally switching to a different channel, as in these two positions the knob can only turn in one way. The other knob is the cable tone, and it emulates the sound going through a cable. If you feel your sound is too bright by having it in the off position, you can darken it by simulating the sound traveling through a cable 5 feet long in the first position up to 100 feet in the last one. I'll include some samples so you can hear the difference. The LEDs on the receiver are a blue one for power on and a green one to signal that audio is arriving to the receiver so if you're having any issues you know that the wireless section of your chain is not responsible. And you do have the two same colored LEDs on the transmitter as well. Moving on there's three signal level indicators which can be three greens for excellent signal and up to three reds which indicate no signal and high levels of interference. And below you have three battery level indicators, three greens for full charge, then two, then one, then one red and one flashing red when your batteries are about to die. So that's a handy thing to keep an eye on during your show. Moving on to the transmitter, it also has a metal casing with rubber sections all around. One of the very few things, if not the only thing I didn't like about this is the mini XLR input, which honestly makes it harder to get a replacement cable if you lose or break one. And this was the issue I mentioned at the beginning of the video. Everything is top notch except for the provider cable, which is not this one. Uh, which uh, I honestly felt was incredibly cheap and a matter of fact it started to give me problems like signal loss just after a few weeks of usage. So here's what's left of it. The jack and the cable just feel incredibly cheap and apparently there is only one design, possibly manufacturer, for these mini XLR connectors. So I reused it to make a better and sturdier one. And apparently they're charging over 40 euros for these cables, which is basically 
just a jack connected to a mini XLR. So I went to a music shop, bought some jacks, some cable and some connectors, and I made three of these just for over 20 euros. So I'm assuming they chose the mini XLR because there wasn't enough space inside to host a jack and not to rip people off, but maybe that's just wishful thinking. On the top of the transmitter, there's an on and off switch and a mute button, which you'll need to press and hold for about a second to mute your instrument and press it once to unmute it. Same blue power LED, which becomes red, then flashing red when you're running low on batteries, uh, which can be changed by opening this little door on the side. Apparently this is an issue for some people as it doesn't feel as sturdy as it should be and it does give you that impression to be honest. The hinge does seem to be plastic so I wouldn't mess with it too much. Once you turn it on the name G50 will appear as well as the transmission mode which is the standard and newer RF2. It can be switched to RF1 if you're using an older transmitter or receiver and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Then the channel number you're using and approximate battery life in hours and minutes will appear, which is quite reliable, I must say, with a pair of new batteries lasting just over eight hours. The two select and value buttons, which have become sort of unreadable on this transmitter, don't do anything unless you press and hold the select button for about a second. And then you can set up your transmitter by selecting the channel number by using the value button and confirm by using the select button. On the next page, you can select high or low battery usage. Always press select to confirm. And on the third page, you can choose a custom name for your transmitter if you really want. If you need to switch to RF1 mode, simply press and hold the select button. And once the channel selection menu appears, press value to toggle between RF1 and RF2. If you wish to lock your transmitter and deactivate all of the buttons on it, press and hold both buttons for about two seconds. The word locked will appear and as well as a padlock icon and all of the buttons will be deactivated, even the on and off switch. To unlock, simply press and hold both buttons again. Finally, there's an all-metal clip held by a screw on the back, as opposed to the plastic one on the G30, which did have a tendency to break off, unfortunately. You can actually change the orientation of the clip simply by unscrewing the screw and changing the orientation of the clip if you wish to do so. Luckily, this feels nice and sturdy and it has never slipped from my strap, so once it's there, it stays there. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful. As always, remember to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time.